Four can topic six, which is the last topic, and is about farming system usage and extension approach. So, by the end of the topic, you should be able to define farming system usage and extension, describe the nature of farming system usage and extension, explain the characteristics of farming system usage and extension, describe its process, and discuss issues in farming system usage and extension implementation. Farming system research and extension is one of the approaches to research and extension, and it is linked to farming systems. It has been brought up with more emphasis on the rural poor people in developing countries like here in Mali. So, as a matter of introduction, before research was more of a top-down approach because different technologies were being developed in labs and research institutions without the knowledge of the farmers. These technologies were then transferred to the farmers using the transfer of technology model. This led to the farmers rejecting the changes because the suggested improvements were unprofitable or too risky to them. It's like the technologies were not addressing the real needs of the people. And also farmers lacked adequate inputs and markets as farmers were just taught to grow crops, let's say pigeon peas, without the knowledge on where to access the inputs as well as on where to save. So this called for an introduction of farming system research and extension approach that specifically considered farmers' conditions. So farming system research and extension is an approach to agricultural research and extension that views the whole farm as a system and not as an individual unit. It focuses on the interdependencies between all the components under the control of members of the farm household and how these components that are under the control of the members of the household interact with the physical, biological, and socioeconomic factors that are not under the household control. This is the systems approach that is applied to on-farm research and considers farmer systems as a whole. This means studying the farm household and its setting through close and frequent contact with household members on their farms, considering the problems and opportunities as they influence the whole farm, setting priorities accordingly, and also evaluating research and development results in terms of the whole farming system and the interest of society. Now, let's look at the nature of farming system research and extension approach. Farming system research and extension allow researchers to both intensively investigate the individual conditions of small farmers and make an impact on large number of farmers. The researchers here will study a small farm and apply the results to a larger farm. Farming systems and research also involves selecting reasonable in from physical, biological, and socioeconomic environments where farmers' cropping and livestock patterns and management practices are similar. The technologies developed for farmers in these research areas are then expected to be applicable to farmers operating elsewhere under similar conditions. The approach uses interdisciplinary teams, that is, specialists in various areas whose compositions varies according to the task to be implemented. The teams then conduct on-farm research and are guided by the Disciplinary specialists in physical, biological, and social sciences, extension specialists, and others who are just concerned with agricultural production. Together, these specialists study the physical conditions such as rainfall, temperatures, and landforms, the biological factors such as production potential and pest problem. We are talking of social economic conditions such as size and nature of land holdings of the farmers, farm and community customs, markets and local services, as well as the farming system. So, what are the characteristics of farming system research and extension? 
farming system with such an extension is farmer based. This means that the team basically pay attention to the farmers' conditions and integrate farmers into the research and development process. It is problem solving such that the team seek with their problems and opportunities to guide research and to identify ways of for making local services and national policies more attuned to the farmers' needs. It is also comprehensive because it considers the whole farming activity in order to learn on how to improve the farmer's output and farmer's welfare, to identify the flexibilities for change in the environment, and to evaluate the results in terms of both farmers and society's interests. Farming system research and extension is interdisciplinary, as researchers and extension staff with different backgrounds work with farmers in identifying problems and opportunities. Yeah, searching for solutions and implementing results. In this case, all parties such as researchers, extensionists, and farmers work together. It is complementary because it specifically offers a means for using the outputs of other research and development organizations for giving direction to others. So here we are talking of using research output of or information for other development organizations to give direction to other work elsewhere. Farming systems research and extension is iterative because the results from research can be used by teams to improve the understanding of the system and design subsequent research and implementation approaches. It is dynamic in such a way that teams introduce native remote changes in the farmer's conditions first, and the favorable results encourage more skillful changes later. Farming systems research and ex extension is reasonable to society. Here, teams keep the long run interests of the general public that is both present and future in mind as well as those of the farming groups immediately affected. Yeah, so what are the stages in farming system research and extension? The first stage is target and research area selection. This is whereby key decision makers, including farming system research and extension team, select one or more target areas. This is done by using the national or regional objectives. The team then divides the target area selected into sub areas with relatively uniform characteristics and then selects a research area representative of selected sub areas. Later, the team chooses the target group in these sub areas, for example, farmers who have common environments and common production patterns and farming practices. The second stage is problem identification and development of research base. Here, the approach identifies and ranks problems and opportunities according to the following criteria, like the long run and short run significance to the farmers and society, the availability of suitable or potential suitable technologies, the ease of implementation, as well as ideas arriving from previous activity. The team then identifies problems and opportunities through a quick recognizing survey of the area through which it collects preliminary data and sets out hypotheses. The third stage is planning on farm research. Here, the team plans the of farm activities and it is the responsibility of the team to divide to decide the extent to which the farmers involvement can be changed the team also considers resource availability the support services and government policy as well as identify identify where and how much change is possible
On farm research emphasizes alternative cropping and livestock farming, management practices, and other activities on the farm household. Yeah, incorporates the farmers' conditions into the design procedures by working closely with farmers. The team meets with farmers in their fields and learn about the conditions. For example, how the farm household divides its activities, which members perform which activities, who has responsibility for which decisions, and who controls which resources. The team then designs record keeping systems, the special studies, climate monitoring, and service to provide additional information about farmers and their involvement. The team also assesses the extent to which local support systems and national policies will accommodate the new technologies. The fourth stage is on-farm research and analysis. Three types of biological production experiments are common, which are researcher-managed trials to experiment under farmers' conditions. There is also farmer-managed tests to learn how farmers respond to the suggested improvements, as well as by imposed trials to apply relatively simple researcher-managed experiments across a range of farmer-managed conditions. The researchers initiate experiments studies and gather data. Then they analyze results in terms of statistical meaning of biological performance, actual resource requirements, economic and financial feasibility, and social cultural acceptability. They estimate the overall impacts on both farmers and society, and researchers examine the opportunities for improving support services and government policy. The last stage is the extension of results. There are two ways of extending the results. We have mat locational testing and pilot production programs. Mat locational testing is an activity that spreads the improved technologies more broadly, meaning to say the results are applied on a broader scale. Now, pilot production programs is an activity that applies the improved technologies on a scale large enough to effectively test the alias support systems. There are several issues in farming system research and extension implementation, such as timing, organizational flex flexibility. Here, the approach can be applied in a variety of situations. It can only be ad adjusted, yes, to fit the organization. For example, the Ministry of Agriculture, Research Stations, and Agricultural Research and Extension Trust, and many more organizations. There is also an issue of staffing requirements. Here, researchers and extension staff require the orientation in the form of refresher courses. Training is also required, and this training is based on objectives, processes, and methodologies of farming system research and extension through in-service training. Farmer system research and extension is cost effective and the process requires government support for its successful implementation. Thank you for your attention.